These are my predictions for paper one AQA GCSE chemistry exam 2025. The prediction comes from the analysis of the papers over the past five years. There are certain trends in the question that usually come up in the exams. And I'm going to share with you what are my predictions based on this analysis. First, there are the topics which are almost in every exam. So you need to make sure that you master all of these topics. The first topic is making soluble salts. So making soluble salts has been a common question over the last four years. They either ask you to plan an experiment to make a soluble salt or or they can give you the steps of making a soluble salt and they could ask you questions about that. Just make sure that you understand how to make a soluble salt. And then acids. So they like to ask about weak acids, strong acids, and also the difference between dilute and concentrated acids, how the different types of acids or the different concentrations of an acid would affect the pH of the solution. Also, there will always be something about titration. So when we talk about titration, we have to talk about calculation. So what are the uh, questions related to calculation that are almost in every single exam? First of all, calculating concentration from titration. This is almost a definite question in your exam. You need to understand how to use the equations to calculate the concentration from titration. Also, there's always a question about calculating the relative atomic mass from the different isotopes. And when they ask you this question, they usually tend to ask you about the isotopes and to define what is meant by isotopes. And then there is always a question about calculating the volume of a gas in a reaction. So pay attention to this calculation as well. Energy profiles, when we talk about exothermic and endothermic reactions, so they usually provide an energy profile for the reaction. Either they ask you to complete the energy profile based on whether this is exothermic or endothermic, or they could ask you to label the activation energy and the overall energy change, or they could give you an energy profile for a specific reaction they're talking about, and they have some um, mistakes and they ask you to identify the mistakes. So, but always there will be something with an energy profile. Also, it's very common to ask you to calculate the enthalpy change from the bond energy. So make sure that you practice these type of questions because they are very, very common in the exam. Electrolysis, electrolysis, there will always be a question about electrolysis. The most common one that is almost in all of the exams is electrolysis of aqueous ionic compounds. So when we talk about aqueous ionic compounds, you need to identify what is the cation that is going to be uh, reduced at the uh, cathode and what is the anion that is going to be oxidized at the anode. So make sure that you actually know um, the um, electrolysis of aqueous ionic compound. Sometimes when they ask about electrolysis, they ask about more than just one um, reaction. So not just the aqueous ionic compounds, but also molten ionic compounds or um, something like um, aluminum oxide and extraction of aluminum oxide with electricity. And then the periodic table is very common in the exam. Almost every single exam will have something related to the periodic table and the trends. When we talk about the trends, we're talking about group one, group seven, and group zero, or the noble gases. Make sure that you know the trends when um, in relation to the um, melting points, boiling points, and also in relation to the reactivity, especially for group one and group seven. Of course, group zero, or the noble gases are not reactive. They like to ask about group one reactions, especially with water. The most common one is reaction with water, but also sometimes they ask about the reaction with uh, acids. So make sure that you know these type of reactions, which one is more reactive, which one is less reactive, and the observations that you notice during these reactions. Displacement reaction, this is when we talk about the reactivity series, so they all would like to ask about a displacement reaction as a type of redox reactions, and also they ask you to write the ionic equations for these reactions. If they get you one of these reactions, I ask you about the displacement reaction, which is very, very common, then they're going to ask you about the oxidation and reduction, which one has been oxidized, which one has been reduced, and why.
bonding. So ionic, covalent and metallic bonding. Very, very common in the exam. Never seen an exam without a question about bonding. Last year and the year before, they asked about metals, properties of metals and alloys. So maybe this year they will focus on covalent compounds because they also asked about, ion, um, about the ionic bonding. So maybe this year they will both uh, focus more on covalent compounds, especially when we talk about giant covalent structures. Uh, also, the dot and cross diagram, it's uh, quite common. It wasn't in the exam last year, so maybe this year they're going to ask you to draw the dot and cross diagram for an ionic compound or covalent compound. And finally, this question will always be in paper one, which is plan and experiment. They have never repeated the same question twice over the years. So usually it's going to be a new experiment they ask you to plan. So don't panic when you see this question, especially if it's something very new to you, you never seen before. All what you need to do is to identify the three variables, the control variable, the uh, independent variable and the dependent variable. The independent variable is the one that you're going to change yourself and then the dependent one is the one that you are going to measure by after you change the independent one and then the control variables have to be kept constant not to change them at all during the experiment so once you identify the three variables then you will be able to plan your experiment and then there are topics which are most likely in the exam this year because they haven't been in the exam last year and they are quite common. So first one, as I said before, is giant covalent structures and carbon allotropes. So this hasn't been in the exam last year. So probably this year they're going to ask you about these. Um, and if they ask about the carbon allotropes and especially fullerene, then they're going to be asking about nanoparticles. So just make sure that you know this topic very well. And then evaluation question. So this is quite common, but it hasn't been in the exam last year. AQA uh, GCSE chemistry examiners like to ask these type of questions um, to evaluate. So they provide you with a table with certain numbers and certain data and ask you to evaluate something. It, usually it's never been um, the same thing. So they never repeated the same question twice. So it's going always to be something different. You just need to use your data analysis skills to analyze the data they provide you with, just to compare the different things they ask you to evaluate um, in terms of their uh, pros and cons, and then just talk about that in your answer. Uh, so, for example, they have been asking before about different methods of extraction of a certain metal and asked you to evaluate the, these different methods. Group 7 elements. Um, I think it might, it's quite um, likely to be in the exam this year, um, especially reactivity trends of uh, group seven elements on displacement uh, reactions for the halogens. And then the use of Avogadro constant to calculate the number of atoms or particles in a certain equation or in a certain reaction, um, because this was quite common, but it hasn't been in the exam over the last two years. So make sure that you know how to do this calculation. And then finally, metals, non-metals and transition metal hasn't been very common lately. So probably they may decide to ask you about this. Just make sure that you know about metals, non-metals and the transition metals, the difference uh, between transition metals and metals in terms of physical and chemical properties. And then there are topics which are common, but they are not always in the exam. So something like calculation of the atom economy and percentage yield. So they are quite common, but they're not in every single exam. It will purely depend on the examiner uh, decision whether or not to include that in the exam this year. They have been in the exam last year anyway. The model of the atom, as you can see from the past papers, it's quite common, but not in every exam as well. It was in the exam last year. Just make sure that you know the basics for this and the different models. And then Mandelieu table, the Mandelieu table, and uh, Mandelieu table is the first periodic table, and sometimes they just ask a single question about that. So make sure that you know the basics. Finally, electrochemical cells and hydrogen fuel cells. They are common, but not in every single exam. There was a very long question last year about electrochemical cells and hydrogen fuel cells. So it's 
less likely that you're going to have a long question this year as well about electrochemical cells. However, when they ask you about electrolysis, they could be asking you about electrochemical cells as well, like what is the difference between these two? Or they may ask you to draw uh, or complete um, a diagram for an electrochemical cell. Just know the basics at least, but um, personally, I don't expect to um, give you a long question about electrochemical cells this year. And finally, I need you to pay attention to these topics because these topics haven't featured in the exam at all over the past four years. And the examiners may decide that it's about time to ask students about these topics because these are in the specifications. So these are the limiting reagents, the law of conservation of mass, 